Hey guys, hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today, I have a tier list video for you, and we will be rating these 29 lovely companions based on their skill and viability in battle. Now, since this is a tier list video, I'm obligated to say that these ratings are my personal opinion and are by no means fact. I'm absolutely okay with anyone who disagrees with my picks. And if you think this list should look any different, let me know down in the comments below. Also, these picks are based off of combat viability and campaign only, and are not representative of PvP performance. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Starting at the very bottom in the F tier, these are the companions that you should pretty much never use under any circumstances unless, of course, they're your favorite character. Kicking us off in the F tier, we have Dead Mike bringing up the rear with his greenified crown shop counterpart SM Arson alongside him. Dead Mike is a Presidio companion that can be obtained from the Presidio questline as long as you chose that your character's parents were killed in a mutiny. Now the reason why Dead Mike makes the F tier is because he doesn't fill any specific role for your team. The term Jack of all trades wouldn't apply here either as he is quite bad at everything, he puts out mediocre damage, he doesn't tank well at all, and his only power is a single super strike which won't carry him very far as he doesn't have Relentless available to him as backup. He can get Vengeance Strike 3 which is a staple for most Buccaneer companions but other than that, his epics are pretty counterintuitive. Immediately following Dead Mike is Gaspar de Vol, another Presidio companion. He is obtained during the Presidio questline if your parents were killed by the Armada. Another thing Dead Mike and Gaspard have in common is that they're both trash companions. Please do not ever let your parents die in a mutiny or by the Armada or else you will be stuck with one of these companions at the bottom of your roster. Taking a look at Gaspard, his epics are all over the place, and he doesn't have a clear-cut role on your team, and with his only ability being a lone super strike, Gaspard will forever be the last to be picked for any team. Our third contender for the F tier is thankfully not another buccaneer but rather a privateer. This choice might surprise you for being so low but I'm gonna have to put Wing Chun in the F tier. Now I know what you're thinking. Sure Wing Chun isn't exactly S tier material but he shouldn't be in the F tier right? Well here's why I put him there. Wing Chun will only join your crew in the tutorial mission if you are a musketeer. And a musketeer only and frankly, musketeers will never need Wing Chun. His accuracy buff does very little for musketeers already high accuracy. And his damage is quite low as well. Buccaneers and privateers might be able to get some use out of Wu-Tang. Wing Chun's Crown Shop clone. But for Wing Chun specifically, he is fully deserving of his position in the bottom tier. I contemplated putting Wing Chun in the D tier because his heal can sometimes be useful in these scenarios, but I decided that this doesn't count for enough to warrant a tier upgrade. The penultimate companion competing for the F tier is Monkey King, a main questline companion who unwillingly consents to joining your crew and sharing your journey of saving the spiral. Now besides his occasionally funny one-liner, Monkey King performs terribly in battle. Despite trying to fit into the glass cannon role, he is simply outshined by other companions. His epics leave quite a bit to be desired, and he has no powers to speak of. Garbage companion. Moving on now we have the final companion to make the F tier. Buccaneers, you might want to hold on to something because you will not like what I'm about to say. Subadai is getting a one-way ticket to the F tier. Now let me preface this by saying that Subadai is an amazing companion. His epics are top-notch and as a result, his damage output is strong. But like Wing Chun, he is forced into the wrong class. Only swashbucklers can recruit Subadai, and he doesn't exactly fit in with any swashbuckler crews. Fan's agility buffs are a swing and a miss for Subadai. The damage dealing role is better suited for Fan as she is able to buff the team as well, and Subadai doesn't provide nearly as much utility and support as someone like El Toro, and is outclassed in the late game by the likes of Contessa. Subadai is fine in the early game, but as you are saying farewell to Skull Island and entering the dreadful skyways of Monquista, you should probably be looking to find a replacement. Temujin is the pay-to-win version of Subadai, and I highly recommend purchasing him if you are a buccaneer with crowns and spare. Okay folks, hopefully I haven't scared you away yet. We're slowly working our way up to the good stuff. Here in the D tier, we have companions that aren't awful but can sometimes perform decently in certain scenarios, or just as a temporary stand-in when your star companion is wounded. Starting off the D tier is the mighty hero himself, Hocules. Does anyone know who he is the son of? Jokes aside, Hocules actually has the foundation to become a staple buccaneer companion. His epic choices are perfect but he falls short when it comes to the number of epics he gets and his powers. Unlike most other Buccaneer companions, Hoculus is only given turn the tide 1 as opposed to turn the tide 2, missing out on that crucial accuracy buff. In addition, Hoculus is only given 5 total compared to Peter Quint and Temujin 7 epics which causes him to miss out on essential aspects of his build such as Blade Storm or Vengeance Strike. Epic Strike is also his only power which can be quite underwhelming as it brings down his damage output. His lack of utility fits into his brawly nature but holds him back as a reliable companion. Next up in the D tier we have Egg Shen. Egg Shen is a companion that is exclusive to privateers although if you want, you can purchase his crown shop counterpart, Zhang Cha. Privateers can actually make pretty good use of Egg with their wide variety of buff powers, but the problem lies in that Egg himself is not a very powerful companion. He is higher than F tier because he has access to Relentless, but he lacks a core epic that Buccaneers crave which is Vengeance Strike. First Strike is not all that great for Egg, and it's made worse that he can't even get First Strike 3. Egg Shen has some of the core foundations of good Buccaneer companions, but unfortunately, what he doesn't have, drags him down. Get your pickled herring ready because Capbeard is coming in and he is taking the third spot in the D tier. 
Catbeard is a main questline companion who was nearly responsible for the complete collapse of the heart of a colonial empire. War crimes aren't the only crimes he committed however since now. He is also being accused of endangering his captain due to his horrendous fighting ability. Melee privateers already have it hard in this world but Catbeard, he just doesn't care. The sword he wields is just for show as his preferred weapon is his infamous pickled herring, inflated to match the utter disgust I have for this skeezy hairball. Excuse me, I got a little carried away. Catbeard has decent epics including Relentless and Blade Storm. But what he doesn't have is stats. Privateers are already at a disadvantage due to having slightly below average accuracy and dodge stats as well as a considerably lower damage stat compared to Buccaneers and Swashbucklers. His only power is a Mega Strike which means he runs out of steam very quickly. All these factors combine to manifest an all-around poor fighter and a heavy toll on ration supplies. The caboose of the D tier is Kobe Jimbo. Kobe is yet another solid companion that is dragged down by a forced class. Kobe has a great selection of epics including Relentless, Blade Storm, First Strike, and Repost, and he can certainly hold his own despite being misplaced in the wrong squad. Unfortunately, there are other companions that Buccaneer would rather be running, leaving Kobe out to dry and lose his flavor. Swashbucklers, however, should definitely consider forking over the money to recruit the crown shop version of Kobe. Wagyu, I normally wouldn't recommend spending money for companions in this game. But Wagyu is hands down one of the most profitable investments you can make. Now as we move on to the C tier, we only have 20 more companions to go. These 20 companions have all managed to be playable in Mumanchu and Kane without being flamed by your random teammates. This one factor alone already makes them decent companions since they will take less of a toll on your overall mental health status. First up in the C tier we have Mormo who is obtainable by Witch Doctors after Ratbeard's Tavern Ambush quest. The most notable aspect of Mormo's kit is his access to a Mojo Storm which in the right circumstance and the right setup can devastate an enemy's lines. His ups also come with a few downs. Mormo's range is nowhere near as long as the player, making it much harder to get that optimal Mojo Storm placement without putting your companion in unnecessary danger. Mojo Blade is another power Mormo can use which acts as a lifeline for any enemies who get to close to Mormo's precious mask. Mormo also gets one use of Mutineer's Grasp which is a pretty meh ability if I'm being honest. The damage isn't there and the utility is alright at best. He also has Crow's Song. Anyways, one more thing to note is that the Crown Shop equivalent of Mormo, Gibuga, does not get a use of Mojo Storm so be careful if you are looking to purchase him. Going into the middle tier next is Louis Lebesk, the tavern companion awarded to Musketeers. Louis is a bit of an odd duck in the sea of Musketeer companions in that he specializes in more of a defensive playstyle, sporting a considerably high armor stat along with the typical medium magic resistance of other Musketeers. Reinforcing this defensive trait is his lack of burst fire. Louis is certainly not going to be the one chaining your opponents like Bonnie Wood, but that doesn't mean he has no offense at all. His Reign of Mortar Shell's ability can get a decent amount of value if played correctly, and can even be improved with Scratch's spell power buff. All in all, Louis falls right on the line of average when it comes to companions. Burgess Latro is another Presidio companion that joins a player's crew at their parents' die to a giant sky squid. Subjecting your parents to this bizarre method of death comes with its benefits though because Burgess Latro, while on average a mediocre companion at best is a top-tier companion in the right scenario. His epics are heavily tailored towards being anti-melee, and can work wonders against pesky buccaneers and swashbucklers trying to chain you. Anti-melee is his only upside however because unlike other top-tier buccaneer companions, Burgess Latro does not have access to a charge ability and is limited to only a super strike. This makes him a very poor gap closer and can leave your crew open to enemy musketeers and witch doctors so pick your fights carefully. One more thing of note. Don't be afraid if you didn't get Burgess Latro in the Presidio quest. He is a purchasable companion in the crown shop under the name Practicus so don't worry. You don't have to restart your playthrough if you don't want to. Moving on to the B tier. These are the companions that can reliably have your back in a fight and can even act as the glue to bring the team dynamic together with their class buffs and abilities. Starting us off in the B tier is none other than Carcarius Grimtooth. This companion can be recruited by Witch Doctors very early into the game and can be found next to the Witch Doctor trainer, Madame Vadima. While questing on your Witch Doctor, Carcarius is indeed one of the companions that helps hold your team together with his will buffs and his Jabu's Embrace Drain spell. Together with Old Scratch, Carcarius can bring a lot to the table for a Witch Doctor's crew. Coming second in the B tier is the Martianess, a privateer companion that can be recruited next to the Commodore in the early stages of the campaign. She is a melee privateer with a diverse selection of epics that you can't go wrong with. Anyone who has played the Martianess knows how well she can chain enemies, and how valuable she is in your crew as you quest throughout the game. She has access to Super Strike as well as a will buff which makes her a decent damage dealer, and a great support companion. The only reason she isn't ranked higher is because there are other companions who can fill her same role, but perform better. Besides that, the Martianess is a great companion, and one that will make your privateer playthrough a bit easier. We've got two privateer companions in a row taking the B tier by storm. Lucky Jack Russell is up next, and he isn't called Lucky for nothing. Lucky Jack can crit chain enemies like no other companion can and he is a beast when it comes to taking buccaneers down a peg. His choice of epics is very similar to that of the Martianess except that he starts with one rank of Bladestorm which is a much better epic than Repel Borders, the default epic of the Martianess. This major upside however comes at the cost of only having a super strike at his disposal and can thus contribute nothing to your crew in terms of support and buffs. 
This companion is obtainable at the end of the Presidio questline if you chose that your parents were lost at sea. You can also purchase an exact clone of him with the likes of Sergeant Shepard from the Crown Shop. Although I don't recommend doing this if good team building is what you are aiming for. It's been a while since we discussed a swashbuckler companion so let's go ahead and do that now. Sarah Steele takes her spot in the B tier. Sarah is another companion that is recruited after Ratbeard's Tavern Ambush quest and is exclusive to swashbuckler players. Sarah is a great companion to have as an off-DPS character to support Fan Flanders. She has a great selection of powers including a super and a mega head, as well as a hide and a shadow dance critical buff, where Sarah Steele falls short is in her epics. She starts the game off with a rank of repel borders, and she is stuck with this throughout the entire game. This can oftentimes be a detriment since it will remove her hide when enemies come to flirt with her. In addition, she does not have access to Relentless which severely limits her chaining potential, and thus her damage too. Although not a perfect companion, Sarah Steele has a lot going for her in that her damage output is still very solid, and her power's arsenal is very extensive, making her a durable companion for those longer fights. Another thing to note is that if you wish to purchase the Crown Shop version of Sarah Steele, Lucy Sterling, she will not come with a Shadow Dance buff. Just something to be aware of. With the last of the B-tier companions also comes the final Presidio companion. Milo Greytail will be taking the final B-tier slot and take the place of the best Presidio companion. This companion is available to all pirates who recall that their parents were tragically killed during a massive storm. Milo comes with solid epics including Blade Storm and Relentless but lacks a third good epic to capitalize. He is also recruited with the rank of Cheap Shot which is arguably the most useless melee epic in the game. Despite of this, you can be sure that when you use Milo in battle, you are gonna see some big numbers popping up. Swashbucklers make the best use of Milo in that they can allow him to hide for a large hit to help burst down the most threatening enemies early. He is better suited for short battles as, like every other Presidio companion, he only has a super strike available to him, his doppelganger, Malik, purchasable in the crown shop which will allow you to finally use that all rat team you always wanted. Finally getting really close to the top, we have the A tier. These are the companions that you will likely see in most team compositions, and for good reason. They are just solid companions. First of the A tier is Kanpo. A goat not only in name but also in fighting power too. This companion is available exclusively to witch doctors and is a glass cannon of the highest proportions. He is one of the very few companions who can hide while not being part of a swashbuckler crew which makes him a very good way for witch doctors to burst down charging enemies and buying your team more time to prepare their spells. Kanpo is also given access to a rally which can be incredibly useful in a pinch, especially if buffed by old scratch. Kanpo also has a perfect selection of epics with Relentless, Bladestorm, and Riposte all being available. Kanpo is overall a great companion and brings a lot to the team. Keisukiyagi is his crown shop variation and is a worthwhile purchase for swashbucklers who could use an extra hand in battle. Barnabas enters this tier list in the A tier as the first dedicated tank. Barnabas will be recruited into your crew after the Ratbeard Tavern ambush quest and is exclusive to Buccaneers. Barnabas plays the role of tank incredibly well with his trident sun power and high armor stat. Not only is he good at taking damage but he is great at dishing out damage as well. Although he doesn't have access to Relentless, he instead has a super strike and a mega strike to put forward considerable damage and he even has a brutal charge to act as a gap closer for dangerous ranged enemies. Barnabas excels at both offense and defense and fulfills multiple purposes, making him a fine addition to a buccaneer's crew. Gerard is the crown shop version of Barnabas, but he does not have brutal charge or the mega strike that Barnabas has. Do not buy Gerard. Another warning for using Barnabas. Make sure you complete your first promotion quest available at level 15 before the scurvy dogs hideout quest in the middle of Cool Ranch. This will cause problems when you try to do this promotion quest. Immediately following one of the best tanks in the game is the best tank in the game, Radbeard. Radbeard takes a spot in the A tier because both his powers and his epics really set him up into his tank role. He has access to a trident song for added resiliency and a super and mega strike as well as the clear the decks which is essentially the reaper for buccaneers. His hold the line and repel borders epics are great for crowd control and debuffing enemy accuracy which allows him to be a dodge tank on top of being a damage tank. Radbeard is not really needed for small time minion battles but rather for longer boss battles or team fights. Even a single Radbeard can make a huge difference. Next up for the A tier is Emmett, and he is the privateer exclusive companion recruited after Radbeard's tavern ambush. Emmett brings excellent utility to his team with his slow effects and his group heal. The slows can be a huge help for large team battles like Kane and Terracotta Warriors while the heal is great for reviving dead players without a range restriction. Emmett is great for holding the enemy back and buying time but when the enemy finally gets into range, he is prepared for them since he comes with a super strike and mega strike. Emmett's lack of burst fire makes it hard for him to chain and by being a privateer, he won't have nearly as much accuracy as a musketeer companion. Despite him also being ranged, just something to consider. Everyone's favorite with Celestia NPC is up next, with Gracie Conrad taking the next spot on the A tier. Gracie is a main questline companion who comes equipped with a very powerful proximity mine. It takes some time to learn how it works initially but once you get the hang of it, you will be very happy with the results. With Old Scratch backing her up, Gracie can rack up an insane amount of damage with her mine and clear a couple enemies off the battlefield right off the bat. Gracie also has a golem summon that can act as a great buffer to slow down enemies with its hold the line epic. Being an engineer and not a fighter, 
She doesn't do too well in melee but can take a fair amount of punishment if the enemy manages to break through. If you're gonna run Gracie, you pretty much have to run Old Scratch too. The Scratch buff boosts the mind's damage twofold and is essential for Gracie's strategy. Only a few companions left to go but here we are with Contessa taking another A tier slot. She is another main questline companion, but you recruit her very late into the campaign. Contessa has a great selection of epics to choose from and good abilities to back up her combat prowess but her main issue is the fact that she only gets a total of 5 epics which causes her to lack an essential rank of Riposte or Blade Storm, cutting down her damage potential. Contessa comes with a hide which puts her among the select few companions the non-swashbucklers can use to hide. Contessa also has a high movement range rivaling that of Fan Flanders of course without the ability to jump. Contessa is a great pick for a swashbuckler team but also works very well for privateers as they can significantly buff her before entering combat with the likes of First Mate's Boon and Valor's Fortress. Overall, she is an all-around great companion and definitely worthy of the A tier. Up next, we have the first main questline companion to join your crew Bonnie Ann. Bonnie Ann is a versatile musketeer companion and is a great asset to any team and at any stage in the game. Her very wide variety of epics allow her to fill a multitude of roles with some of the more common builds being a more DPS and chaining build with burst fire, double tap, and overwatch, and an anti-musketeer build with quick draw. Bonnie is also the companion who has awarded the highest amount of epics throughout the campaign, having a total of 8 epics, 9 if you count stock assault, as early as level 57. Moving on to Bonnie's power loadout. She comes with a scatterblast shot which is a great multi-target power that reduces enemy dodge, she also has Second Wind which can come in very handy in dire scenarios and in team battles as it has infinite range. Her stock assault power is pretty bad because it will trigger enemy melee epics and you should almost never use it unless there is a very low health enemy and you could use the extra movement. All in all, excellent companion for nearly every class. Up next, we have a companion that I had a really hard time rating. But the final A tier slot I decided should belong to Fan Flanders. I believe Fan is a very strong companion and is a must-have for all swashbuckler crews and she is kinda in between the A and S tiers. To start off, Fan has a lot of things going for her. She comes with an agility buff which is the most reliable way swashbucklers can buff their agility outside of gear or pet grants. She also comes with a grand shadow dance and a super strike ability, both of which contribute greatly to her damage output and chaining potential. Fan has the ability to leap over obstacles which greatly increases her combat maneuverability, allowing her to reach enemies in strong positions or make a quick getaway if needed. Her major downside, and the main reason she didn't quite make the S tier is because her default epic is flanking and you can't get rid of it. Not only is flanking typically a useless epic, it can sometimes cause you to accidentally pull Fan out of hiding before she lands her super strike which can be quite annoying at times, and leaving you wishing that she came with her post instead. Like I said, just because Fan didn't make the S tier doesn't mean she isn't among the best companions in the game. I would easily give her a top 5 position in terms of best companions but let me know what you think Fan should have been rated. With only 4 companions remaining we move on to the S tier. It should come as no surprise to anyone that these companions made it to the top. But we'll start the S tier with the worst and work our way up to the best as we go. Coming in 4th place on the tier list, we have El Toro. El Toro is a main questline companion and is a top tier companion to have in almost any crew due to his spread to core buff. The added accuracy and dodge you give your team goes a long way and it will certainly feel good as it will make your battles feel much more consistent. We all know the feeling of starting a really good chain and then suddenly missing an attack and having the chain end abruptly. We have also all been in that situation where one of your companions is about to die. But if they manage to dodge this one attack, they'll survive the battle. El Toro gives your companions a leg up in both these scenarios and overall, contributes greatly to the average damage output and dodge chances of your team. Now despite having the fewest epics out of anyone in the S tier, El Toro can certainly hold his own in a fight and dish out serious punishment to enemies who try to take him down. Taking third place is the lifeblood of Buccaneer Cruz, Peter Quint. Quint has a versatile array of epics and powers to utilize in combat and makes him the total package when it comes to the Buccaneer companions. He is the only companion to come with a plus 100 stat buff as opposed to the usual plus 75. And in addition, he comes with a super strike for excellent damage output and a brutal charge to close the gap on enemy musketeers and witch doctors. Quint acts as one of the best supporting units in the game while also being a phenomenal damage dealer and a decent tank with his very high 85 armor stat. There is very little to complain about when discussing the downsides of the Pelican Marauder other than his rather slow base speed which is just standard of most Buccaneer companions. Anyone who is looking to play a Buccaneer will be very glad to have Peter Quint among their ranks. Who's gonna take second place in this tier list? It's gotta be Chantel Livingstone. It comes as no surprise to anyone that Old Scratch couldn't be being. But Chantel is a real contender for second best companion in the game. Here's why. In addition to having an agility buff for her team, she gets an astounding three uses of Super Strike with two of them being sniper shots with unlimited range. This allows her to put massive amounts of pressure right out the gate without even having to move an inch. Her epics are as good as they can get with Burst Fire, Double Tap, Overwatch, and Quick Adjust all being options for her. Chantel is an easy S tier pick for me because she fills the heavy DPS role similarly to how Bonnie fills it, but she also acts as a great support companion and comes with an over-the-top set of powers. 
Musketeers will never regret having Chantel on their crew, and she will always amass incredible value in the battle she fights. It's finally time to crown the best companion in the game, and it's no secret who it is. You probably already knew who it was going to be when you clicked on this video. But anyways, here he is Old Scratch. Old Scratch is the final main questline companion to talk about, and he is the best support character in the game by far. Admittedly, he is a little underwhelming when you first recruit him but once you start getting his promotions done, he scales very hard into the late game. His ability to buff the spell power of his crew is invaluable and will lead to the doubling, or better of the damage of all your spells, bleeds, heals, you name it. In a large team battle, having multiple players bring a scratch to the table will lead to unfathomable amounts of spell damage and boosts already good powers like flames, bombs, and mojo storm to overpowered proportions. As if having the best support powers in the game was enough. Scratch also comes with the use of Jabu's Kiss which is a great way to close out battles or finish off wounded enemies as his own spell power buffs increase the power of these spells. Old Scratch is a companion that will make you feel like you are cheating, and rightfully so. All classes will have access to him, and if you are lucky enough to have a Blood's Jacket to equip, campaigning with Scratch will become mindless and you will find yourself fighting Valentians in no time flat. So let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with my choices? If not, make sure to leave a comment down below and tell me how you would have ranked them. Thank you for watching and take care.